All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to, uh, I guess, Steve and Ronan talk nerd shit, Final Fantasy VII edition, because this isn't two mats, one Steve. Uh, we are a yeah, mat short no. for that. We are an inferior mat short tonight uh, because yeah. the, the other mat does not appreciate the greatness that is Final Fantasy VII. I am Steve, joined by Ronan. Ronan, how are you? I'm I'm good. I, you know, I'm a little upset about inferior fries from Wendy's, and also my car is still at the fucking repair shop. It's bullshit. Uh, all, very... we're already, we're doing this already. Yeah, let's fucking do it. Do oh, it. F- Put your money out fine. there. Yeah. <laughs> I have you... no clue. <laughs> yeah, that's Jesus what I need Christ. to see. Uh, off to a good start. <laughs> Uh, Ronan's car, like the buggy breaking down in Cosmo Canyon, he's got to do like a side quest before he gets his car back. Uh, I assume that that side quest is just working, waiting. using a different vehicle, waiting, uh, playing some mini games like poker while, uh, while, while the buggy gets, uh, gets fixed up. Uh, so we are here tonight to talk about Final Fantasy VII. At the time of this recording, uh, we are five days away from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, it, four years ago now. It seems like it's such a long time ago. Four years ago, Final it, Fantasy it is, VII yeah, right Remake. About four years on the dot, yeah. Yeah, because it came out, what, I think April 2020? Because I think, I, I remember uh, it was supposed to be March 2020, and then I, I took a week off, and I think they like they delayed it like a month or something, I think. Maybe yeah, I'm making yeah, that up. Yeah, it came out in the like uh, while the like while the lockdowns and everything the pandemic was still in. We weren't in the oh I don't know about this phase of it. We were in the too terrified to open stores up phase of it. So that's when it came out, and that was uh, that was actually one of the first instances where I was glad to have a digital download. Like okay, I'll just buy it on the store. Fuck it. Yeah, I uh, I remember I had a pre order through GameStop. And uh, I, I had to call in and cancel it. I was like, look, man, I want the game, but I'm not, you know, risking the sweet release of death to come and get it from you. Please give me my money back. And then I promptly ordered the uh, the digital version. But it's been four years. Uh, Ronan and I have a, a great affinity for, for the original game. And, and also, I think we are both very, very positive on the remake. Does some shit we're not happy with, but on the whole, I think we are we're we're happy that we got it. We're looking forward to rebirth. Um, before we talk about the remake, though, Ronan, like, what are I just want to talk about? Like, what are your what are your general feelings about just the original game? We don't need to rehash the plot. The game's twenty five years old. I assume anyone that clicked on this knows what happened. Uh, but like, for me, like it it changed what I looked for. For, from entertainment in video games, but uh, before I get into that, like, what, how, how, what are your thoughts on the original game? Like, how did it impact you? I don't want to get too sentimental, but this is actually part of a deep connection that we share because you were the one who actually really did say, "It's like Ronan, you should play this game." It wasn't Ronan back then, but it was like, like this is probably something that's going to be up your alley. You're going to enjoy this. And so I was like, "Oh, okay, sure." And yeah, at the, at back in the day, you know, Frank and other various like, people were also like very high on this game. I, I, this was probably the first like genuine j- Japanese RPG that I actually sunk my teeth into and enjoyed up until this point like you know my rpg knowledge was you know in terms of turn-based battling was pokemon so this this was like a whole new thing it was like what uh, it like uh it has visually it definitely has not aged well <laughs> but uh, i think gameplay wise it probably still holds up and i still I, like there are still moments in it that I have that I remember. It's it's the, like yeah, you know, there's some cringe to it as well. It's kind of become memeified at this point, but it's it, like uh, like it's also one of the few points. Like okay, well this is this is where my affinity for Final Fantasy started, and it almost ended exactly after this too. <laughs> so that's fair. That's a uh... yeah. I am yeah very much in the same boat. I don't know that. I don't recall playing any sort of RPG prior to Final Fantasy VII. If I did play it, I I didn't even know. If I did play another one, I I didn't even know what an RPG was. Like the term 
role-playing game was not uh, a term that I was familiar with. And keep in mind, you know, uh, I grew up in, like, crushing, crippling poverty. There were no game magazines coming to the Steve household telling me about these new upcoming games. I played Final Fantasy VII uh, solely because of the, the TV commercials uh, that I saw that, hey, that looks like a cool game, and there was no more thought put into it than that. But yeah. when I played it, I vaguely it, remember those commercials too. Yeah, vaguely. the commercials were like the FMVs of of, uh, of Cloud. I'm just a Cloud. That's a different game. Uh, of Cloud on a on, on the train, <laughs> on the bike. Yeah, the bike going, going, I guess into and then out of Midgar. Um, <laughs> yeah, cut to Midgar. Dramatic voice. Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah, I had never heard of Final Fantasy. I, I didn't know like. I, you know, are there six other games that I need to play to understand what's going on here? Exactly. I had no concept <laughs> of what an RPG was, let alone what Final Fantasy was. But I played Final Fantasy VII, and it, it, it changed what I look for in video games. Prior to this game... Uh, I, I grew up in the Blockbuster video era. Uh, you know, every weekend, my, my dad would, would take me to Blockbuster and pay like $4 for me to rent a video game for the weekend. And I could play anything. I could grab any video game that Blockbuster had and get at least a weekend's worth of entertainment out of it. Once I played Final Fantasy VII, that went away. Like I lost the ability to fully enjoy a video game if it didn't have some sort of like incredible like story rich narrative like i from that point forward i had to be invested in the story and invested in the characters for me to fully enjoy a game and my my tastes have have branched back out a little bit since then but final fantasy 7 was so good that it killed like just platformers for me I, I can't say kill. I I kind of prefer platformers in general. But no, it's like it also like this is the like this is also the type of game where it's like yeah, there was no way that you were able to get through this in a weekend. As much as you could try to power through it, I'm like I'd be curious what a speed run of Final Fantasy VII actually is. But uh, yeah, that this that probably must have also been like an eye opening experience. Like what a game on four discs? Oh, wait, was this one three or four? This discs? was three. This was three. It, it, starting with uh, eight. It. it eight and nine were both four discs yeah it, like so it's like that that probably was like a what I, holy cow this game takes so like like forever to play it's like 90 like for people who were playing rpgs like you know, in hindsight like i didn't know it at the time either but you know the knowledge i have now games like this kind of existed like you know Chron chrono trigger that was that that was one like on the super nintendo or like Final Fantasy, what was six called on the suit? Three, I think. Yes, six uh, yeah, six was three, and four was two. Or Super Mario RPG. I tried like like three, <laughs> and uh, and Super Mario RPG when I was a kid, and did not understand it. The term ba the turn based concept angered and confused me. I didn't I didn't enjoy the menus. I didn't like none of it. So it's like add like the concept of a game that lasted for like for like longer the story lot story wise for longer than like an like you know two three hours was just mind blowing to me at the time even playing something like like Legend of Zelda like Link to the Past that was the longest that it got and th then you move up into like you know the next gen and uh, you know it it changed a little bit and, like it it's it's even other games of that era like you know i i greatly enjoyed metal gear solid but you can blast through that game in like three hours you can't do that with final fantasy you can blast through resident evil in a couple hours frank and i have done it several times before just handing the controller back and forth being bored here uh, you do this next part <laughs> yeah but you, again you can't do that with final fantasy 7 that was like a brand new experience for young steve and ronan it's like it, changing the way that stories can be told and be oh shit somebody's popped in. I was about to say this this turned into a really boring poker game. <laughs> it's just you and me, just like check, check, check. But it it definitely was one of those games that kind of changes your perspective on what games can be. Yeah, I was still very much playing games where uh, you basically walked right and punched bad guys until you hit a boss or a checkpoint. And I lost the ability to uh, to play uh, to play those games 
after uh, Final Fantasy VII, and Final Fantasy VII sent me down like a the the RPG like rabbit hole. Like I had never played uh, previous uh, at the time it was SquareSoft. I had never played previous SquareSoft RPGs, so I I, I heard from friends that were more in the know. Like I, I sought out Chrono Trigger. I think I tried Final Fantasy. Uh, three slash six but uh i didn't actually like finish that game until many years later uh the, the love of rpgs uh, created in me by final fantasy 7 led me to my my all-time favorite video game which is star ocean 2 star ocean, star ocean. Yeah. Star ocean <laughs> yeah, 2 is, is, is great um but i mean i i can't say enough like how much what i needed from entertainment came from final fantasy 7 like matt and i uh, the other matt uh we we have uh, we we have this conversation all the time like we're i am very much uh story focused i cannot fully enjoy a thing unless the story makes sense where like he is very much willing to you know just just like you know let let the the spectacle of the images on screen hit on screen hit him and yeah, story is secondary uh like, yeah yeah, yeah. I we've got that ringer with <laughs> i care about the story uh, of all of the things that i'm investing in specifically because of final fantasy 7 yeah yeah, I'm like um, structure. I I need I need things to like I need the structure to be there. I need the rules to be established and to be set in place. But I'm also going to take your story as see, I've said this several times. I'll take the story as seriously as like you know whatever material, be it game or movie, is taking itself. As part of why like Dark Knight Rises doesn't hit well because like that take that movie takes itself very seriously and then it does stupid shit that doesn't work within its narrative whereas like you know ninja turtles out of the shadows is stupid as fuck but it doesn't care so i can it's like so like that that game being like that movie being stupid doesn't bother me the same sort of thing goes with the game like uh my, one of my favorite games ever is uh Yo super mario world 2 yoshi's island there's like no story in that but like it's just you know wonderful gameplay bliss so the lack of story doesn't bother me as opposed to then you get into other stuff like might be a side tangent but you you and i have famously gone back and forth you know i guess privately never openly about like final fantasy 8 <laughs> and, and like how you know it's like aspects of it don't work for me but like for you they do so it's just like I, I, I probably be more that middle of the road between like you and other Matt, like where he needs like the spectacle and the awe and like you know, you know, blue lightsabers. Whereas I, you know, like you want like character and story, and I, I want like you know, character structure and things to make sense. Uh, agreed. Uh, I'm very big on the stories making sense, and I think for the most part, uh, Final Fantasy VII uh, original does make sense. Uh, which I guess leads me into uh, Final Fantasy Remake. It, I guess our, our conversation, uh, just kind of in general about what they're doing with the remake. Is remake even a remake? What's Rebirth going to be like? Um, and I will say, I had a great time with remake. I cannot wait to play Final Fantasy Rebirth. Uh, it is getting amazing reviews right now, and I, I'm so hyped to play this game. Um, I have this fear in the back of my head that you know, in in four more years when we get to fin when we get to play Final Fantasy Remake Three, whatever they're going to call that, uh, I worry that I'm going to hit the end of that game and think that didn't make any sense, uh, and it's specifically <laughs> because of the time fuckery that appears to be happening with this game. Had a great yeah. time with Remake. Had a great time with Remake again when I replayed it here very recently. The time fuckery has me big time concerned. Yeah, I was like, I was at work today, my first job. I'm sitting here cleaning out a coil, and mentally I'm kind of like thinking about the conversation today and how, like, how, like, I did have to bring in, like, do you have to rub in? It's like, how's it feel, Steve? The multiverse has infiltrated sacred Final Fantasy. <laughs> you can't yes. escape it. God, I had like the the two like the the two like guaranteed ways to make your story make less sense than it otherwise could have made is to have time travel 
or the multiverse or both. And I feel like this game ha- has got that. So let, let's let me uh, let's explain what we mean by that. Um, I think I think Ronan and I, like you and I, kind of like very quickly after starting the game realized like this is not a remake. So- like this is <laughs> something's on yeah yeah you figure that out like right after the reactor well actually it's like when the reactor blows up that automatically tells you that it's different because you're you're going through like for also for sake of discussion Steve is going through Final Fantasy OG right now and uh, have you gotten out of Midgard yet? Yes, I have. Okay, yeah, because I figure that's about two hours in, and you're done with Midgard. Or am I wrong? Is it a little a little bit longer? I I mean I don't I don't rush it. So it's probably about. Five hours. I was also kind of like grinding some early limit breaks, so you know. But yeah, right. you can you can get through Midgar very quickly in the original game. It doesn't take you know. I'm think I'm at like a, I think about 27 hours right now on playthrough two on easy. <laughs> it's, it's, they, uh, so like it, like when the when the re, like uh, you know stuff is different and changing the minute the reactor stuff happens because of the original game. The reactor goes off without a hit. Like, you know, the bomb does what it's supposed to do. And in the remakes, like, the bomb doesn't actually do it. Shinra blows it up. It's like, oh, well, that's different. But you could brush that aside as, like, a major thing. Like, little thing. That wasn't where I instantly went, like, this is different. Where I went, like, this is different. And spoilers for people who haven't played a three-year-old game. Is when the black feathers fall down and Sethroth suddenly appears, like, 30 minutes into the game. It's like, they couldn't even, like... They couldn't even edge you a little bit? No, no, we just have to... Oh, here he is. He's too popular not to have in the game 30 minutes in. Yeah, I think where, where it really hit home for me, because I, like, I mean, Sephiroth was in the trailers for this game, so I, 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 I expected Sephiroth to show up uh, more often. What, what really... And, and the fact that, like, Shinra ultimately blew up the first reactor, not Jesse and Cloud and Barrett. Uh, like that didn't bother me. I, I, I'm completely fine with remakes changing things, and so like the this game made a change to uh, to make Shinra even more of a piece of shit than they are in the original game. Well, like what really like caught me was like the introduction of the plot ghosts, and they are in the game. They are called yeah. whispers or arbiters of fate. No, they are the plot ghosts. Uh, the <laughs> plot ghosts. We're not a part of the original Final Fantasy. And so when I see the plot ghosts, the first time you encounter them is uh, after re- after Reactor 1 blows up and, and Cloud meets It's very Aerith. quickly uh, into the game. Yeah. Uh, the first Reactor blows up and, and Cloud meets Aerith for the first time. And, uh, the ghost. and then the plot ghosts show up. And I'm like, what the hell are these? Like, is this... And my, my thought was... Like, yeah, are, I are the, the guys in the black robe? So did I. I thought like like is the game changing things to where like the the so called like Sephiroth clones are not just these these uh yeah, I, I don't know like mentally broken guys in in black robes with uh, t- tattooed numbers on their shoulder. Like is this is this it? Like rather than summoning Sephiroth clones are like these are are these like ghosts the new iteration of that and and Sephiroth is going to summon all of these for whatever this game's version of reunion is. And then like I think the second time we saw them, I had kind of figured it out. Because uh, the second time we see them is um, right before uh, the, the second bombing mission for Reactor. I don't know what a Reactor is. I'm just going to call it the second bombing mission. Because uh, in the first game, uh, Tifa and Barrett say, Hey, Cloud, you want to come bomb another Reactor? And Cloud's like, All right, give me money and I'll do it. In scene. <laughs> uh in this game, Barrett's like, no, like I, I don't like you. You are Shinra. I don't trust you. Uh, our business here is done. Go away. And so I, I see that. And I'm like, that's okay. Well, they're they're definitely changing things now because, you know, like Cloud Cloud is supposed to go on this bombing run. Or is this remake just going to skip that entire thing? And am I going to go run into Aerith again in a, in a different way? Um, and then the plot ghosts show up to change sure things. That it happens. Yeah, to 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 change things to where uh, Cloud, you know, properly goes on the bombing mission. And so I think that's where I was kind of like connecting the dots. Like, wait a minute, like the game like teased a change and then like forced it back into uh, 
uh, it forced you know cloud back in, I guess into compliance with the uh, the way things are supposed to happen. Um, and the plot ghosts are weird. I, I, I it, it seems like strange. Like it's a remake. You can if you want to change things, you can just change them. Uh, but for whatever reason, they decided to they decided to put an in universe explanation for why things happen slightly differently, and so I, I've kind of wondered, like, what's going on here? Is like, is it was this a chicken or egg scenario? Was there always the plan for it to be this this time fuckery, or did someone like create the idea of the plot ghost and then think, well, uh, if yeah, if these ghosts are here to enforce destiny, then there must be an optimal timeline out there, and that was where. Uh, yeah, and that must have been the the OG game. Anyways, long story short, this game is not a remake. Uh, th- uh, this game is a sequel? Question mark? An alternate timeline? Like typically, when you the idea of you're going to remake something, you are like replacing the previous story. Like the previous story like goes away as its own thing, and you are telling a a new story. But this is not that. Like I, I would say, like this is a sequel where the the original game happened. Something shitty happened with time, and now a a, a second timeline is happening with things going uh, slightly different. If you consider this a remake or a reboot or whatever, it is in the same vein as the the J.J. Abrams uh, uh, Star Trek movies where the original Star Trek timeline happened and then Spock gets sent back in time. And so that creates a brand new timeline that the Abrams movies follow. Uh, the Mortal Kombat series did a very similar thing back on their ninth game. Like it's, yeah, there's the original Hasn't Mortal, Mortal Kombat Com- done that like six times. Or so? uh, only <laughs> twice, oddly enough. They're only on their, their second continuity reboot, which I guess is their third timeline, which I, I fucking hate. But that's a whole other can of worms. Uh, yeah. But yeah, b- yeah, back in like, time. they're like the first like eight Mortal Kombat games are one continuous story. And then the beginning of Mortal Kombat nine is uh Raiden at the end of that original timeline sending a message back to win. his yeah he must win could you make that more vague raiden thank you uh <laughs> yeah raiden sends a message back to his younger self which creates a new timeline i think that's what's going on here so again i i this is not a remake if it is a remake it is a very specific kind of remake but i would argue that this is a sequel because the original <laughs> game had to have happened for this to make what limited sense it kind of makes yeah, yeah, it's up. Like we'll like we'll get more answers on the the sequel, whatever. Uh, one, I, I assume <laughs> when, uh, when a, a remake two or Electric Boogaloo. What, what are they calling it again? Rebirth. <laughs> Rebirth. When Rebirth comes out, we'll hopefully get better understanding. Uh, it's like I would use the old Hollywood term of uh, this is a soft reboot. <laughs> up it, but you are correct. It does like you know. Eventually, at the end of the game, we do kind of discover that like you know, like in spoilers, uh, that Eris and Setheroth are both very well aware of what's supposed to happen, and Setheroth seems to be trying to change. He's trying to come up with an outcome where he wins, and Eris knows she like she seems to have an idea of what's supposed to be happening too. I don't know how much of it like is it a Doctor Strange thing where she can see forward into her well maybe not Doctor Strange is it like a Doctor Manhattan thing where she can see the future but only her future? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's a scene uh, early on. It, it might even be the the first time that that she and Cloud interact or maybe not. I don't know. There's a point in the game where uh uh Air, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Eris and Aerith interchangeably throughout this series. It's like the the very first time I ever played Final Fantasy VII OG, I got the version of the game that spelled her name A E R I S, and so she was yeah, yeah. Eris for for fucking twenty five years for me. And now like the this game is forcing the the th on me. Uh, so I if, well, I, if fair, I if I that's how it's supposed to be, isn't it? Yeah, I think it was, it's supposed it was to like be a language Aerith. translation yeah. error. 
Uh, regardless, uh, if, if I flip-flop, forgive me, I can't help it, but Aerith, uh, she says at one point that uh, every time the the plot ghosts touch her, she she feels like she's losing a part of herself, and I, I always, and that's never expected explain what exactly she's losing uh i kind of feel like this is you know me making shit up because the game hasn't told us what's actually going on yet but i wonder like is she is she losing the ability to kind of like live her life unimpeded by knowledge of the future because the first time she runs into cloud she like if she recognizes him she has no reaction whatsoever uh but then you know, later on, the second time they meet, like she knows that he's a he. She knows that he's a soldier and can act as a bodyguard without him giving any details about his life to her. So I kind of feel like every time they touch her, she learns a little bit more, and she hates that. And by the end, uh, and by the end, she like kind of probably fully knows uh, what's going on here, even if uh, we, the audience, don't necessarily know. But we, we don't know yet like who's actually running the train here or whoever who's actually driving the train here in regards to like how did this begin? Like the the assumption is Sephiroth is is trying to change things, like as Ronan said, to uh to create a version of events where he wins. But we don't actually know yet, I don't think. Yeah, no, I'm I'm making the assumption that it's Sephiroth doing this just because, you know, canonically speaking you know, because canon is very important. Uh, Sethroff does have, like, reality-shattering kind of... Pa- like, yeah, like I think one of his final attacks uh, in the game where he actually does become, like, the one-winged angel. Like, what he's doing is creating, like, a pocket dimension that he sends you into and bullshit. So he's, like... like So I assume that this is him doing, like, reality, you know, bullshit, time-traveling stuff because he can. But uh, it's... It's 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 difficult to say, especially in a game where there are magic spells that can make things move faster in time and slower in time, and can also heal and not heal, but but only when the plot needs them to. Uh, that that's just that's yeah. the shit you have to. <laughs> Is haste materia or time materia canon? Can you actually just give yourself random bouts of super speed, or is that just a battle mechanic? Uh, you know, the game doesn't really explain that. You know, I'm fine. I don't need those questions answered. No, no it's a, at a certain point, you do have to take the mystery science theater approach of just repeat to yourself, it's just a game slash show, and I should really just relax. <laughs> but, then yeah. you, but then you have to ask yourself, why the fuck didn't they use the Phoenix Down on her? Why, man? Why? No, no, because Phoenix Down only cures the KO status. She's fucking dead. <laughs> I guess, okay, okay, fine. Fine, there's your... There's your explanation. Okay. See, like I, we're we're look at all these people leaving this table because of our nerd bullshit discussion. <laughs> One of my favorite nerd sort of. I had the Final Fantasy guide, Final Fantasy VII guide, and I still have it. It's on my bookshelf over there, my original guide, and the original page that tells you the combination to the safe to, uh, to get Vincent Valentine in the original game is still torn. But me playing it the first time, I was like, I don't know what this number is. But Steve, after his, like, you know, 97th playthrough, oh, yeah, the co- the combination is, like, a you know, 97, 30, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you just knew what it was. <laughs> I did play the shit out of that game. Like, I played it through multiple times on my original PlayStation. I'm playing it through again. Uh, fucking, like, 26, 27 years later. Uh, I can't imagine a point where I just ever think you know what i'm done uh dealing with final fantasy 7 um yeah. but it was let's like ronan uh explain what the hell's going on with the timeline plural in, in this game like what because the, the game has not like explained anything yet everything we are saying is it's speculation all, all <laughs> this game does is just set up the fact that something wonky has gone on with time and presumably we are going to to learn more about that going forward so ronin what do you think is going on well we've kind of already hinted at i think what's going on is that like the ba- like the bad guy from like the og sethroth like legendary video game villain is making some he, he, somehow through one of these various attempts to you know like uh 
summon forth uh, Genova and do terrible shit, rule the planet. It's like at some point, like he was able to 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 go backwards in time, or at least send part of himself backwards in time to try and change things. And Aerith, being like an age an ancient, somehow got tied into that too. Because it, as we mentioned earlier, it's Sethroth and it's Aerith who seems to have an idea that like, okay, well, this has played out a couple of times already. So, uh, and even then, like me saying a couple of times, I have no real reason to believe that it's just you know the the assumption being that like they know something's up they've seen this happen before so that i who knows how many reset attempts this is for them this this could be you know again dr strange reference this could be dr strange dormammu i've come to bargain and then dies like six hundred thousand times or whatever who knows how long this has been going on where he's just trying to find an outcome where he will win and he doesn't seem to have done that but this time, like, see, apparently this time things have changed because of the fact that, like, at the end of the remake, instead of just being, okay, well, you're, the ending boss battle of getting out of Midgar is fighting, like, a big monster truck in the original game. That's how you, that's how you, you know, actually get to the open world segment of the game. In this the game, you truck. fight the god of destiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, like, you have, like, you have, sh- you, you have killed the Time Lords or whatever the fuck they are. And now, apparently, like, the chains of fate have been... Because they do say something... So, like, I haven't, I'm still going through my second playthrough of this game. Uh, one of my, I've got some complaints on this game but might, that have popped up more so in my second playthrough. But, like, uh, I, I do seem to recall that at the end of the... Like, at the end of the remake, they do kind of say, like... The hint is more or less about, okay, well, we've killed, like, you know, the Time Lords or whatever. So now, like, the Bonds of Destiny are completely torn apart. So now every everything now is just, like, a fresh new, uh, a fresh clean slate. Uh, like, now, apparently, it may, maybe now things don't happen the way they're supposed to happen because the uh, plot ghost, I assume, aren't going to be around in, the, in a rebirth or whatever number three is. Yeah, I have. I I don't remember where this came from. I I have a memory of reading an article or an interview or something saying that the, the plot ghosts are done. So I'm I'm gonna be. I I hate the plot ghosts. Love the game. I hate the plot ghosts. I'm hoping that they're done. I'm gonna be disappointed if they come back in a, in in part two. Uh, but yeah, there there's quotes about uh. You know the, the bonds of destiny have been shattered. Eris starts talking about how how like terrifying the freedom is because now they can do what they want, uh, uh, unbound by destiny. But yeah, like, uh, I hadn't even considered what what you just pitched was how, how do we know this is the next timeline after the original game? Uh, for all we know, like Sephiroth has run this back a dozen times before, and this is the first time that you know we beat the time god or the the destiny god uh in previous timelines just you know went upon their 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 normal path uh but yeah. even even like not considering like the uh, uh potential changes like there are already changes within this game like zach zach is the biggest question mark for me uh zach survives his final stand and how's that going to impact things because if if we are led to believe that zach now survived the uh uh, if we were to believe that zach survived in the main timeline that like god i mean what that completely undoes everything that cloud is like why there would be no need for uh for for cloud to absorb the mind of his dead buddy if his dead buddy is in fact an alive buddy uh so like is is zach in this main universe or is zach uh in another timeline are we going all in on the final fantasy 7 multiverse and now we've got the main timeline or sorry we've got the original game timeline and the remake timeline and a timeline where Zach is alive. And um, Ronan, I don't know if you've uh, played uh, uh, the, uh, the the Yuffie DLC, but the, the the Zach stuff gets expanded just a little smidgen. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's just it, it's touched on a little bit more that makes it just kind of more confusing than it needs to be. I think, I'd like I must have forgotten like because I've. 
I completely didn't realize, or maybe I've just forgotten that Zach is apparently he's still alive. So I, I've missed that. Well, I don't know. No, so uh, you're you've played the I game before. Yeah, yeah, I know he's popping up in a lot of the stuff for uh, Rebirth. I know, I know he's popping up in a lot of that. But I don't know if that's flashbacks or if he's actually alive and kicking. I I I. I yeah. don't remember. C- continue. So uh, let, let me uh, again. You've played the game, so hopefully this is not considered spoiling it for I you. I have played the game before. <laughs> uh, so at the end, when you beat the Time God, there is a big explosion, and then it cuts back to Zach's final stand, and there's another explosion, and Zach lives because uh, Zach like carries cloud into midgar so yeah there's a timeline out there and we don't know yet if it's the main remake timeline or if there is another timeline uh but somehow some way zach is alive now and just it it would make no sense to me that he is alive in the main timeline so i'm I mean, this is going to be confusing no matter what they do now, but the least confusing thing to do is to, like, give Zack his own timeline. And there's some, like, there's some support for that because, like, just these these brave, beautiful bastards on Reddit have, like, like examined <laughs> things, like, frame by frame. And, Nerds. Uh, and, and like, the who's, what's the name of the dog that's, like, the avalanche mascot? Like, Stamp? Like, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, Stamp. There's a, yeah, there's a dog... Uh, there's a dog image that you see frequently throughout the game, and someone, I guess, like examined the footage and determined that whenever you see Zach and Stamp, Zach's version of Stamp is like a different breed. Uh, it's just weird, weird, unnecessary, com- unnecessarily complicated stuff. Uh, but I'm hoping that Zach is off on his own timeline doing his own thing and eventually that's going to converge with our, our main remake crew because if they try to say that zach was alive the whole time in, in the main timeline that makes uh, i mean that makes the least amount of sense of all the things that they could do and i would argue that takes away what cloud went through yeah yeah uh like i don't know why you would bring zach into it like like, like, is this, and again, like, going back to, like, the multiversal sort of question, is this, like, this, is this Zack kind of just been pulled from a moment in time, or is he from, like, a diff, or did he genuinely, like, survive the, uh, like, uh, like, his final stand? Because he, I, I've seen, I've seen, like, the video of him, like, you know, carrying Cloud into the city, like, you know, the, like, he's leaning on his shoulder, they're walking into Midgar, uh, I, I get like you see the walls with Midgar. There's, I guess, there's the chant. Like, you don't like this is where you get kind of like you know nitpicky. You don't actually see him get in your Midgar. It's possible he could die. Before actually, the let me spoil something for you here, Ronan. Okay, uh, so I'm wrong. All right. <laughs> uh, the Yuffie DLC has a bonus scene where Zach actually gets back to Aerith's church looking for her. Okay. Well, this so, is, it's, so yeah, it's, presumably, like, un- unless it, unless they are completely fucking with us, and this is a scene from further in the past, it certainly seems to be, like, Zach lived, made it into Midgar, went looking for Aerith, and didn't find her, and that's where we're at now. The question now is, are they going to try to say that that happened in the main timeline, which would not make of all the things that they could do, that would make the least amount of sense or is Zach off doing his own thing? Uh, what I'm hoping for, and maybe, maybe this will take us into a discussion of what we are hoping to see in rebirth. Um, I, 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 I kind of like the idea that uh, Zach's off doing his own thing in his own timeline and kind of, kind of discovers that uh, because he lived his whole, you know, this whole timeline is just kind of doomed because the, uh, the, 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 the sequence of events that would lead to Sephiroth being killed are, are no longer possible. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're broken now. Like, because like, you know, like, uh, with Zach, Zach not being like Zach helping cloud, get it like, uh, keeping cloud alive. Because like, uh, when Z- by the time like as uh, Zach is t- carrying Cloud like uh, you know and he dies in his last name, has Cloud already been fucked with and experimented on by Hojo or? Did oh yeah, Cloud is. 
I, so I actually like for the first time ever, like, I actually went back and like watched all of the Crisis Core cutscenes, uh, and I did that specifically because, like, think back to like 1997. Knowledge of Zack existing would have been this huge ass crazy fucking spoiler for the entire twist of the game. Now Zack is everywhere. Like they released Crisis Core, a, a remaster of Crisis Core, like the year before uh, b- before Rebirth is going to come out. Even just like on the Rebirth demo, Zack, who as far as I can tell, like isn't even in this demo, like. Zach is like prominently displayed on like the loading screen. Like for whatever reason, Square Enix wants you to know that Zach is a thing now, contrary to how they treated it in the uh, in, in the original game. So like Zach has got to do something big. He's got to be a yeah, big it, part of this. I mean, it's so like like we we mentioned how this is not a remake. It's like because like it's like obviously it's doing new things with the story. In fairness, because we also discussed how just important and, like, you know, groundbreaking Final Fantasy VII, you know, really was. A game that's, like, that important, like, you know, the twist of, like, okay, Cloud actually wasn't in Soldier, and he just kind of, you know, in, like, assumed Zack's identity, for lack of a better word, false memory in himself, or whatever term you'd want to use for it. Uh, like, like you know, an a, a unreliable narrator, he's implanted himself into Zack's you know scenario in the story like th- like th- like that's a pretty big that that's a pretty big twist that co- that lines right up there with would you kindly like in terms of like you know a twist in a game that's like you know wow when it like when it happens to you and you, and you realize what's been going on because of that and also like you know the death <laughs> of certain characters they're just too pr- they're just too predominant you can't redo them you can't su- surprise people with them anymore so like your best bet is to just kind of roll with it and take like what's supposed to be a stat and then do what this is doing like okay we're going to change events it's the same characters it's the same basic story like these characters were Seth Roth but we're gonna fuck we're gonna fuck with things so it's different now that's really I guess the only way you could do it, it like uh and because otherwise you're just doing the exact same thing, and people will be like, "It's not going to have the same impact." Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just like the the, the whole concept. Maybe uh, Squeenix is just assuming that everyone knows who Zach is at this point, even if you've never played the original game. Because there there are going to be people out there for whom they never played the original. Like this is their final fantasy seven experience right now, going through remake and pretty soon here rebirth. Yeah. I, well, in they fairness, assume it's like their final, their final fantasy seven experience is this new version of final fantasy seven. It's not the, cause like, yeah, there's plenty of people who are like 18, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, they didn't like, they weren't even alive when the original game came out and the original game visually has not aged well. And that will that that will lock a lot of people out. They'll look at it and say, "No, nah, I'm not down with this." And they'll just, you know, like to experience it. They'll just watch, like you know, you know, they'll they'll do what most people will do. Like they'll go to YouTube and they'll just watch a recap video of it and get all the spoilers and shit. Like you can't get around that in this day and age. So the only way to really deal with that is to just do something new. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm very worried about the Zack stuff. Yeah. I, did, did we mention that this game is done by the same fuck who did Kingdom Hearts, which also has us very well? Oh yeah, I that is like I said, like my my greatest fear is four years from now when we finish the series, I'm going to finish it and be like, that didn't make any fucking sense. Like you're, you 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 screwed it up with the time fuckery. Um, the greatest, the greatest fear is that at the end of the ne- at the end of the last game, Cloud's going to be like, "Well, I understand now. The live stream is life." Boom, and then like, yo, J Pop's going to start playing. <laughs> we you you walk walk away. <laughs> that's my greatest fear. <laughs> that, like, that's, that... I dug that shit. In, I dug that shit in the first two Kingdom Hearts games, but by the time the third one came out, twenty fucking years later, I was over it. <laughs> oh, you know it's weird. It's like that's something that like, this is going off on a tangent. Eventually, I want to I want to get back to what we think is going on with with Zach. Uh, but that, like, like it, this is something that, like I feel like no one talks about. Like the the ending of final of the the ending of the original Final Fantasy VII fucking sucks. 
It is fucking stupid. There is and no I, I ending. I love that game. There is, yeah. yes, it's like that game. You learn. Point, you that. learn nothing about what happens here. Like the end of Final Fantasy VII is, uh, meteor is coming down. You see the live stream shoot up and hit meteor. Close up of Eris's faith. Uh, Eris, Eris, credits. Bleh, 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 <laughs> lisping. Eris's face, and then credits. And then after the credits, you get, you know, 500 years later, you see uh, Red 13 and some Red 13 babies, uh, you know, go up to Midgar, which has now been like, reclaimed by nature. Okay, like, Meteor presumably didn't wipe out the Earth. Did, like, or did the people survive? Was civilization destroyed? Like, what happened to any part of this world after this final battle? It's actually, like, not until uh, uh, Advent Children... <laughs> <laughs> that we you actually, actually learn an ending and, to Final Fantasy and, VII. And side note, side note, the guy who did Advent Children is the same fucking Kingdom Hearts guy, and it's like this is the, like this is the same fucking guy. The director of Advent Children was the director of Kingdom Hearts one, two, and three, and is the director of this new Final Fantasy VII stuff. God damn it! I'm now worried and scared. All of my happiness is over. With. This this episode is over. Unlike a oh, subscribe. Man. If you want to, if you want to talk about just like unnecessary complications to the Final Fantasy VII world, Advent Children is up there. I, I like Advent Children because it actually told me what happened with Final Fantasy VII, and because just you know like the the battle scenes between Cloud and Sephiroth are awesome. I can go, I can just pull up that final fight scene at any point in time and watch it and love it. Crisis Core is some of the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Like. Yeah. The Crisis Core is like it. It makes the the story of Final Fantasy VII so unnecessarily convoluted. I, I, I think what I'm realizing is that Final Fantasy VII has had a lot. And we keep bringing this up, and this isn't me like trying to dig a, a knife into people, but it's like this is like Final Fantasy VII has a lot of the Star Wars thing going on with it, where it started off as one thing, and then over time, too much shit has been packed onto it, and has now made it stupid. Yeah, there's there's the original Final Fantasy VII, and there's Advent Children, there, there's Crisis Core, there's Before Crisis, there's Dirge of Cerberus. We got a I'm remake, say, we got a rebirth, we got we got, we got certain... multiple animes. Like they just. They just it, they they yeah, it's spaceballs too. There's... The search for more money. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent certain there's probably at least like twelve Japanese only mobile mobile games that are canonically important to the series that tell you like oh well here's a game that shows you how Tenzing was recruited into like the the Turks and that's actually very important with the, or the what what was the one where it was a battle royale game like you know the first soldier <laughs> first soldier yeah I think. <laughs> A battle royale game that lasted like nine months before, before Square Enix was like, yeah, nope. they just they, yeah, the Squeenix, you went too far. But Crisis Core, it's like, it, it, Ronan, did you know that outside of the the project to create Sephiroth, there was another Genova based project that created like two other guys that were also super powerful like Sephiroth and also and, had one wing. And, and also had one wing. Yes, they absolutely fucking did. And and one a, of them a black wing and a white wing. Yes, they absolutely did. Symbolism. And 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 one of the guys was actually in Nibelheim at the reactor with Zach and, and Sephiroth when when Sephiroth you know learned about what Genova was and he has his freak out like one of these guys was there and just like was never fucking mentioned in the original game it's fucking stupid uh whoever created Crisis Core uh it was bad and you should feel bad Zack is a cool <laughs> character you did not need to put him through that no no it's like again we're we're taking this is why prequels are a bad idea very few like I, I like literally i think god did the arena is the only prequel i can think of that that like uh like, that doesn't fuck with the <laughs> things it actually improves on the source material i can't think of a uh, listener one listener out there try try and tell us about other prequels that actually improve the original source material because all the ones i can think of just go back and they make it fucking worse <laughs> Agreed. Prequels are fucking dumb. But anyways, back to my original point. And I, I don't know that I have much more to say about remake. Like I, I liked it. I would like it more 
if the time fuckery wasn't a thing, uh, I, I, you know, uh, Ronan and I, we, I don't believe we haven't talked about this. Like you and I have had this conversation. It's like we just wanted the remake to be a remake. We just wanted like the the same game, essentially the same story, modern gameplay, modern graphics, modern presentation. Like I'm, I like what we got, but it it certainly was not my ideal. Yeah, I'm I'm a hunt. I'm glad. Like I did not require what they gave us. I've, I've been said to you for what you're going through right now because you you downloaded that uh like that 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 mod thing, whatever Seventh Heaven or whatever it's called. Yes. That, like, it, like oh well, here's a visual. Here's a high definite. Here's an HD like background red texture pack. Here's a like you know upgraded uh, character models. Here's upgraded like a uh, spell to like a uh, animations and stuff. Textures. Yeah, textures and particle effects and shit. It's like, it's like Square Enix could have put this. I could have saved Square Enix like probably a couple of hundred million dollars. All they had to do was just make that mod, put it out there, done it like 15 years ago. Which is, I, I don't think it's literally when they announced the Final Fantasy VII remake because we also omitted the fact that like this game's development has been a royal fucking shit show. <laughs> but uh, like, who knows at what point in the in its development is when like you know the story shenanigans started. But they could have easily when they like when they they started all of this stuff with like with I think it was a PlayStation Three tech demo of the opening of Final yep, Fantasy. I remember VII. that. Yeah, and everyone was like, "Whoa, Final Fantasy Seven remake!" And Square was like, "Oh no, no, we're never remaking this game." All they would have had to have done at that point for a license to print money. It's just done because they have done this with like I think Final Fantasy three, four, and five. They did like actual full-on remakes of them on the Nintendo DS. They're, the art style is a little different, but they're full-on remakes, and they were very good. Do that for Final Fantasy seven. Like you know, make make the text and make the fucking tissues actually useful for something. That fucking item you get like twelve thousand of them in Final Fantasy seven, and that item has no fucking use. One thirty-fifth <laughs> make- soldier. <laughs> comment if you get that reference <laughs> yeah no, I, it's like may, maybe the 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 hd textures pack was the remake we needed all along yeah do that sell it for 25 dollars and put it on every console imaginable license to print money i would like have been fine did... like give, give me like you know PS3 level graphics, just remake the entire game top to bottom with just a graphical overhaul and some voice acting. Change nothing else. Okay, no, let me back I don't up. even need the voice acting. I really don't. I'm fine with like you're not having the voice acting. I, I want grew some up voice acting. Legend of Zelda games before they had voice acting. <laughs> so, like I, want... I don't need it. I'm fine no, with it. No, 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 give me like the exact, like the exact gameplay of the original game, uh, with some voice acting. PS3 level graphics and uh, like ex- an extra five minutes of ending to actually tell me what the hell happened. Yeah, yeah, give it an actual ending because it is amazing how once you mention like I somehow I've completely forgotten the Final Fantasy VII has a shit ending and yet I don't I I have not yet lived down the trauma of Mass Effect Three shit ending. Oh, <laughs> but Mass Effect Three but, is going to be a different Matt or Matt and Steve talk nerd shit. <laughs> the whole Mass Effect trilogy, but, but the, it's like that's like it's like somehow I completely omitted in my mind that Final Fantasy VII has a fucking garbage ending by having no ending until you mentioned it just now. It so, is like it, it's real bad. Like we, we've somehow omitted the fact that that had a terrible ending, and that's kind of a de- like a lot of times for me, a bad ending because you you can start you can have like you know a rough opening. Maybe even kind of a rough middle act, you know, as The Rock famously said when going into his WrestleMania match with Stone Cold Steve Act. Act 1 and Act 2, they don't matter! All that, re- all the people remember is Act 3. Like, that, like that, that, there's a lot of truth to that. You can, sa- you can salvage some bullshit with a good ending. And, you, and a bad ending will also tank some, like, you know, 200 plus hours and two games worth of story can be tanked in five minutes worth of a bad ending. It it really can be, but somehow Final Fantasy VII it didn't matter. Yeah, I, I my, my only explanation is I was young and stupid and blown away by everything else I had seen that I just I didn't notice that there were like 
10 minutes of exposition that should have been at the end of the game and weren't. So, like, go, like, uh, okay, so there's the differences. Like, they're, like, that's, I think that's us going into, like, you know, our fear of, like, like what, what Remake did and what, uh, going into our fear of what Rebirth could be. But, like, having gone back through Final Fantasy VII Remake, there are several, there, there are some negatives into the, in this game, and I do want to get onto those. But there are also plenty of really good positive story changes and character changes that they have done. Uh, so let us now give praise to Thirsty Jess. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse is awesome in this game. Like, I mean, Jesse was like kind of flirty with Cloud in the original game. Uh, no, she gets a, a whole uh, a, a whole chapter dedicated to her just being hot for Cloud, and it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> if Cloud had like two bright two functioning brain cells he could easily have the world's greatest foursome going on it wouldn't take much like it's like this man could pull it off he could get it done but he's not gonna and that's that's the fan service that we deserve god damn it and we're never gonna <laughs> get it <laughs> but, yeah i also like uh, yeah uh, thirsty jesse is a lot of fun in the game i also love barrett <laughs> Uh, Barrett I was just was a, about to get to that. Yeah, Barrett is a dick bag in the original game. Like, I don't know if anyone else has, has replayed the original game uh, recently, but Barrett is shitty to people. Like, he straight up tells uh, Jesse and Biggs and Wedge that the only reason we had to hire Cloud is because the three of you are so useless. Like, he is not nice to them. He is not like the teddy bear that he is in uh, in uh, in remake. Yeah, it re, like because yeah, it's a, remake plays him off like you know exactly what you would think—the big, gruff, tough guy who puts on this tough persona. But you know, it turns out he has a heart of gold. It's what every, it's what, it's what, it's what every biker wants to pretend like they are. That's that's what Barrett is in this game, and which do, like that does help out because exactly like I I don't have many memories of like you know Barrett's character in the original game because it's been a while since I played it, but. What I do remember is that he exists largely has a stereo. It's almost like a, a country that has maybe three black people in it. What like so most of the like most Japanese people had never seen a black guy, and they only know their only knowledge of black people was like rap videos, and like oh well we're gonna put every offensive stereotype in rap music. That's what Barrett's gonna be. Like they had just had no clue how to do it, and this time they're like, well let's just make him a human being instead of a stereotype. Yeah, some Cause... people might refer to original Barrett as a problematic. Yeah, yeah, you could you could probably make a strong case that original Barrett. Like you, you're you're going through it now, like uh, if you were like if you're going through it like in your playthrough, similar to how I always did, like you know you use Barrett right up until you don't need him anymore. <laughs> like he he's useful purely for range, and then later on you get Aerith, who you know, okay I'll use her for magic range, and then later on you get Vincent, so you get you know gun and magic range. So Barrett becomes obsolete really fucking quickly. But in this game, because of the way the game is structured, you can't just randomly choose. You can't go around with the characters that you want. All the, there are there are sections where you are forced to use people, even if you don't want to use them, you're stuck with them. Which, like, I, if if you find that a restrictive gameplay element that you don't like, I I accept it. I understand it, but you're missing out. But. Like a lot of characters do get much better development. Like uh, the uh, part that like uh, resonated with me more or less is like a uh, well, not necessarily, re but stood out to it stuck it stuck out to me is when like you're going back into Wall Market for the second time and you have Barrett with you this time and you're trying to figure out a way to get to the top plate or you know to, to you know to, to, to like to, yeah to get to the like out of sector the out of the sector what is it six slums and get on the like get get to Shinriko. I think that's you're, right. You're going through. Yeah, you're, go you're going through your normal contacts to try and get back there, and eventually you get into Don Corneo's mansion, and uh, like like a, a, a phone. Like I don't. I, is, what is his name? Le Leslie. I think that's right. Like I, uh, I, I, I knew exactly who you're talking about. It's like that guy is so unimportant. I don't even remember his name. That guy is an unused character model from Final Fantasy 16. Which, which, which Final Fantasy is it? Where it's like the teenage mutant boy, like with the teenage rich boys wearing leather. 
15, yeah, th- this guy is clearly an unused character model from 15. Like, cause the second I saw him, that was, I don't know why, but I was like, yeah, this this is a, this is a, this was somebody from 15 they didn't use, so they stuck him in here. Reuse those assets, baby. Woo! But you're going through the sewers with him, and Barrett's being a proper dickbag to him. Which, you know, fair, fair enough, he was going to fuck you over. <laughs> but, uh, until suddenly... Like, uh, like he, he gets, like, a bag of some stuff stolen from him, and this section drags for so fucking long, you're chasing these stupid fucking monsters through the sewer. And it drags forever until you finally get this guy's bag. And it's not a key, because he's been telling you that this bag that I need has a key in it to open this door, and it's not. It's just a locket. And Barrett, and like, so Barrett sees this, and Barrett's like, that ain't no goddamn key! And then Barrett stops, he's like, and you ain't like you ain't the type to wear a locket. Were they family? Instant, cha- instant change in, Bar- in Barrett's character. This guy, because now suddenly Barrett understands this guy has lost somebody. Because Barrett, you know, spoilers for his character later on. Barrett has also lost people and body parts. <laughs> so Barrett understands suddenly what this guy's going through, and his whole demeanor changes instantly. And it's like that's good character development. That, that's good. I like that. Like Biggs and Wedge, like. Throwaway characters. Wedge is still kind of annoying, but yeah, you know, like they yeah, they're full characters. Like not they're just a family. Jackson. Like Barrett goes to like yeah. hug them at different points. Like his character his characterization is so far removed from the original game. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 great. It's 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 really good. Like Barrett's not the only one who gets like this kind of attention. Yeah, you because know, like for a lot of people, like you know Tifa. I, I, we're not, you go back in my day, we just called her Tifa, but yeah, Tifa, like, uh, has now, I guess, is the proper pronunciation for her name, uh, was just like, oh, well, you used her because, you know, she was the, you know, the chick with the giant boobs, but she actually has full character in this game. She's like, like, she's not just some, like, you know, generic, like, you know, harem waifu anime kind of thing. It's like, she's got real character. And, like, the part that stuck out for me was when you're going through the train yard. Another section that just fucking drags for fucking ever. Goddamn stupid train yard. And, uh, it's like, the, haunt- the train yard is haunted. And she's, pr- like, you know, nothing has shaken this woman until this point. Because she is terrified in the graveyard. But, uh, <laughs> it's a nice, funny moment when, t- like... There, like, there is some anime girl anger going on in this one scene where Eris is like, well, that doesn't matter. I have my bodyguard. Grabs hold of Cloud's arm. Insta snaps to Tiffa's face, and she's just angry. <laughs> just just <laughs> anger. How dare, you, how dare you grab Cloud's arm? So she grabs his other arm, and she's like, okay, we'll just go. Th-. But she's, but you but you figure out quickly, she's scared of Ghost. Like, you know, she's kind of scared of the dark. She's scared of the Ghost. And she's scared through a good chunk of this right up until the end when you're beating the final boss in this area. And she's the one who gets the, fu- the finishing blow. And she, there, like, there's a character growth moment there. She's not scared of the dark anymore. She's not scared of the ghosts because like, she, like, she, like, the desire to help the spirits of the dead children in, the, in this uh, train yard has overcome her fear. And she's got a, there's an arc there. It's almost like you know they're telling a story. They're developing stuff. It's 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 neat to see, considering the dredge of stupid shit that we've had to sit through the last couple of years, be it bad Marvel movies or bad TV shows. And then you go through this game, and it's like, wow, there's like these characters. There's it's subtle stuff, but it's there and it's good. But did you, the Steve? Do you? No, I was trying to. Kick? I just, yeah, I, I agree. I was just, I was uh, letting you go. Uh, that <laughs> does bring up, uh, you know, maybe you know uh, the the Stewie Griffin, you know, turd sandwich, where you say like a good thing and then a bad thing and, a, and then a good thing. Uh, so Ronan's very positive on the, uh, the 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 character development and the character changes in the game. Let me tell you a fucking negative. It took a whole lot of fucking padding to turn Midgar into a full standalone game. <laughs> to turn what was a... If you're taking your time, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say between three to five hour section of the original game. To turn that in to 20 to 30 plus hours. Ugh, Jesus, there are like, parts I, of this where it drags. And I, there are I, several. Every, each chapter has some section that drags way too fucking long. 
I feel like the like the game almost doesn't begin uh, until uh, uh, until you you get to the plate and it's being attacked because Shinra is about to drop it. Like uh, you know, Wall Market is great. Uh, it's like you know, the opening of the game, like the the first couple of chapters, like the the various uh, reactor bombings, and then your your adventure with Eris, uh, and then Wall Market is really good. So maybe it's like everything between Wall Market and the plate dropping is real bad. So like the sewers, uh, the, the 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 sewers, the train graveyard. Man, that that should have been five minutes. Like, I don't, I don't actually don't want them at all. I want to just like beat Corneo, and it's like we better get to the, we better get back to the plate quick, and then you quickly go back to the plate. Uh, man, <laughs> the middle of this game is is real rough, and then you get to uh, uh, you, you get to uh, Hojo's lab, and you go through this whole extra dungeon where Hojo is like running you through this gauntlet of uh of experiments that he wants you to find. Oh fuck, I forgot. Oh, I haven't even gotten to you that haven't point even yet. Gotten I, just, yet. I, just fi- I just finished up the section where it's like you meet like, you know, Avalanche's man on the inside, the mayor, and it's like, my secret password is the mayor is the best. It's like that that's the part that I'm at right now in my second playthrough. And now you're like, oh yeah, then you like you have all this bullshit to do with Hojo. It's like Oh fuck me! I forgot about this shit. God, damn. how did they turn Shinra's ba- like a fucking cor- corporate headquarters into a section that's too goddamn long? Too fucking uh, long. Funny side story. I had forgotten that uh, Ronan. Do you remember Mayor? It's Mayor Domino. Do you remember Mayor Domino being in the original game? I know, but are you about to tell me that he actually is? He actually is, and he makes you guess his password and it's just it's just a list of words it's like uh you know various four letter words and the word best is on there and i thought the mayor is the best i remember that i i just played that game best is not the password in the original final <laughs> fantasy just for anyone for anyone who goes back to revisit the game it's not best uh final for fantasy 7 remake that, 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 that led was a me reference astray. to something yeah, for anyone thinking that was a reference to something, congratulations, you played yourself. Yes, I played <laughs> myself. But, oh, man, the padding in this game. And I understand, like, you, you're making you know, a, a full-price game. you got to make people feel like they're getting their money worth. But, oh, man, I, 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 look, Squeenix, I would not have been upset if you cut 10 hours out of this game. Like, get rid of the I train graveyard, up- get rid of the sewer, get rid of... Uh, Hojo's bonus dungeon, like streamline those and, and give me something, give me give me something else to replace that gameplay, and I would have been completely fine. Yeah, I mean, on the like, it's I I understand so, like I understand the desire, or at least what I'm assuming to be the desire. I haven't read developer doc dot diaries or anything like that of this game. My assumption is that they were like, well. You 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 blitz through Midgar in the original game. It is a passing footnote. Let's flesh out Midgar because Midgar is a is a city that you could have an entire forty fucking hour game in. And oh, surprise! That's what happens. Somebody somebody must have said that you could have a whole game in Midgar. Yeah, yeah, you could, but that doesn't mean you should. You sons of bitches, did you not listen to Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park? Just because you could do something doesn't mean you should. Yeah, like, fl- I would have been happy the if they should... bits. Yeah, yeah. It's like on the. It's there are par- parts of it that are good. Like I like the fact that when the first bomb goes off, you actually spend some time on the top plate, and you see the destruction that the bomb did. That like in the, like, like is it like the. It, yeah, I think it would have been more impactful. This is why I was saying like I don't like the fact that like Shinra actually blows up that reactor. It would have been more impactful to have seen like okay, this is your doing. You did this. Like no, you didn't do this. Shinra did this. But it would have been better if it, like okay, well yeah, you're responsible for what this is like for what's happening to these people right now. But like but but you get to see some fleshed out bits on the surface. And uh, like like there's the an idea that they don't 
pull off very well that is in the original game. Like you, like you, you went through the original game, so like the whole time you're under the plate, like in like you're in, you're in the slum. There's even a bit of dialogue that Barrett has where he says like you know day and night doesn't matter in the slum because there's no sunlight. Like like the slums are dark in Final Fantasy VII original because there's no sunlight. And in, in the remake. There are these. There are supposed to be giant sun lamps that are supposed to be replicating the sun, but they don't because there's natural sunlight all over the place. And like you turn on, like it's, it's like they they go against their own logic. There's a part of the game where you have to turn off three giant sun lamps, but it's like it doesn't matter because I can see the sun in the background. I can see the sky back there. It's like you can look up and you can see how the plate's not finished and there's sunlight shining down. This whole segment with the sunlights is stupid. But I think they should have kept that to, like because the darkness, that would have actually made it a little bit more impactful. Like, okay, here's the slum that these people live in, but it's it's not. It's like just bright and sunny the whole time. But uh, that's I think that's missed opportunity there. And I also, like, again, I didn't like the fact that, like, Avalanche isn't the one that set these bombs off because Barrett gets character growth in the original game, like you know, as he looks back on it later on in the game and realizes what he was doing, just blowing up reactors was wrong. It wasn't the right way to do it. Just, uh, but like changes, like I, I, I kind of understand why they were doing that, but I would have preferred it much better <laughs> if you would cut the shit out of Midgar. Gotten us out of, gotten us out of this fucking city. Cut down some of the padding. I don't know where you would have ended it, <laughs> like going out into the world because you can't do the full-on open-world game. But like, you find a stopping point. Stop it at Cosmo Canyon. Stop it somewhere. God damn it. I'm I'm fi completely fine with them just limiting the game to Midgar. It's just like I. I would. I think the game would be better as a streamlined twenty-hour game in Midgar than a padded thirty-hour game in Midgar. Like I'm completely fine with the ending point, but yeah, man, padding real rough, real real rough in this game. Like if you wanted to pad things, like like pad the parts that had story moments. Like they're you know, you know have Cloud spin more time getting to know the people in in sector seven because a lot of them are going to fucking die soon uh have him spend oh, more time in wall market uh there was no need to add an entire separate storyline to the train graveyard like all train graveyard was in the original game is just uh, a dungeon you you enter the dungeon you get to the exit as soon as possible there is no reason for this to be anything more than that in this game I have to kind of uh, do a bit of a uh, correction. There. So, them bringing down the plate is something else that they that, that I do feel that this game fucks up. So, you, like there are characters that you do meet while you're going around in the slums, uh, like a like a, the new character, uh, what's her name, Merle? Like yeah, a, like Tifa's uh, Tifa, uh, Tifa's landlord. Tifa's landlord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like there's a neighborhood watch. Like there's a like character. I forget his name now, but there are characters that you meet in the slums. There's the fucking idiot Johnny who's down there too. Like, but none of these people die when they bring the plate down. As a matter of fact, you see nothing but survivors. Every main character that you've met in the in, like in this like while you were in the plate, they all survive. Even Wedge fucking survives and i'm not trying to hate on wedge but wedge there was no fucking reason for him to like uh, survive this he should have been murdered dead let his cats live for <laughs> you like, know it's time. weird about wedge because like the the, the stupid, time ghosts are the trying time to kill ghosts. and they fail yeah like the, how did how did he escape the time ghosts i uh, eventually the time ghosts come and get him but like in this like he falls off the, like uh, several stories in the air he falls down and in the original game, like, they tell Eris to, like, stay with him, but then she has to, uh, you know, go go off to rescue Marlene, and we just assume that he dies. Uh, in this, he gets, like, a whole segment where he's, like, trying to rally the troops in, in Sector 7. It's like, where are the time ghosts here? Like, wasn't he supposed to just fucking die there? Yeah, and, like, w when you see the plate starting to fall down, the time ghosts are keeping him pinned down. Because, like, you know, like, the, the plot ghosts say, okay, well, you have to die here. And the plot ghosts fuck up! 
They think he doesn't fucking die. He survives. Why didn't? Why wasn't that the moment that shattered reality? Because the time goes to have failed. <laughs> the, like uh, this is again. This isn't me trying to tell like he has to die because he's an annoying character. It would have been more impactful if they had all died because those like those three are the main three ki- people, like including Merle. Like well, okay, we'll throw in Merle. That's like four. Those are the main four characters that you get like that you build some form of relationship to in in the slums, and all of them, well, like two like Jess and and Biggs, they die. Like, you know, as they should, fighting at, like, a fighting Shinra. They don't die in the plate falling down. It's like, everyone, it's like, all the NPCs that you meet in Sector 7 all survive when that plate comes down, which hampers significantly, like, the effect of that. Obviously, you know, millions of people died. And well, probably, I don't know how many people live in the plate. But lots of people die, but it's, but it's an Independence Day kind of thing. Where it's like, okay, you know that the alien's giant city-destroying beam has killed countless millions of people, but you don't actually see them dying. So, like, it, it, in that aspect, it's like, it's, well, the deaths don't mean anything because I haven't experienced... No one who we were attached to died. In, in the when the plate fell down, so it kind of cut down the impact. You see when you're when they're leaving it and they're grappling around, you see the plate falling down, and you see T- uh, Tifa and like Barrett being upset and angry at it. But again, no one who we were attached to was killed in it. Yeah, that's fair. Like uh, we we assumed that a bunch of people that the characters cared about died, uh, but it, it's very much a. a a tell, a don't show scenario. So, yeah, because I'm thinking back, like, who? I mean, everyone who presumably died never had a name or any lines, as far as our characters are concerned. Yeah, no. Like, like obviously, people did die when the plate fell down, but like, too, like way too many people survived it. Like, and that's again, where was the plot ghost on this? The plot ghost, yeah, the plot ghost was supposed to make sure that this was a massacre, and the, the plot. Like the plot goes pale. So, uh, yeah. So so we why so we've got the some. Thing you... So the the thing that made the story unnecessarily confusing were also inconsistent in their ability to do the job. Great. Uh, I hope like ten years from now this does not end up being a game that I look back on and my feelings have changed. Because right now <laughs> I, I I love it. Like there are things that I wish they had done differently. I certainly wish that uh, like, if they were if they were dead set on having this be an alternate timeline rather than a true remake i would have greatly preferred you know like when when cloud is about to be uh kicked off the team before the second reactor bombing like it would be it would be so much simpler in my mind for cloud to just have like a vision of him in their in the new reactor and he, he just insists that he needs to go like that's so simple and so much easier to process than a fucking plot ghost. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm hoping that that Square Enix uh, sticks the landing on Rebirth and uh, whatever whatever they're going to call the next one. Yeah, it would have been it would make too much sense for Part Three to be called Reunion, but they already used that name on their Crisis Core remaster. <laughs> I mean, no one's going to count that. They can call it Final Fantasy VII Reunion. No one's going to hold that against it. Yeah, Are we'll they? see. I don't no, know. No. Yeah, I, I, I like Final Fantasy Remake a lot. Uh, some questionable things there. I, I, I personally would not have made a remake in the way that they did it, but I ultimately like what we got, and I, I hope that uh, the quality continues in, in Rebirth. Uh, so, right, any, any, anything else you want to talk about about remake before we? We, we make some predictions about Rebirth uh, approximately a week before it comes out. Yeah. It's a, it's a minor thing, but I liked it when I, like, uh, Bar- <laughs> like it's, uh, this, is just, this is like a visual kind of flare thing. Barrett's sunglasses, actually, like, the way that light affects, like, the way that the light affects them, some scenes, like, it's, it's natural. It's like, you know, the, you can see through them in certain areas, but at other times you can't. It's based purely on the light. And I was like, that's a neat aspect of, of it. Where most games, when characters have sunglasses on, they're just one constant shade of dark that you can never see through. So that that's just, that's like a, a nifty little visual flair that I noticed and appreciated. It's like, oh, that is cool. His like his sunglasses are affected properly by the light. That's neat. That, that has nothing to do with the story, or anything. 
but I, I do enjoy that little that little flair. I, I like that. See, where are the plot ghosts at? Because Barrett didn't have sunglasses in the original game. The plot ghost no. should have shown up and taken his glasses away from him. No, I believe the sunglasses were a thing that he got in, uh... God, what the fuck was the name of that movie? <laughs> Advent Children. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think I think the sunglasses were something he got in his uh, two-minute cameo in in Advent Children because most of the, most of our original party only show up in Advent Children for like half a second and they're gone. Blink, blink, and you miss Yuffie. <laughs> I'm just saying that the plot goes. In addition to letting uh, I guess Wedge survive the the several story fall, uh, they did not take Barrett's uh, sunglasses away from him. He was not supposed to have them. Uh, that's it. I, I think I, I think I'm done talking about Rebirth. Great game, not perfect. Great game. Hoping for the best for Rebirth. So let's talk about Rebirth because uh, like we have no idea what's going to happen re- with Rebirth. It seems to be like a, an open world ish game. Uh, presumably, uh, from everything that people are saying, it's going to it's going to end where disc one of the original game ended. And so once again, spoilers for a 25 plus year old game. Uh, the, the end of disc one of final fantasy is the death of Eris. Uh, Sephiroth, which uh, I guess we, we eventually learn is uh, a chunk of Genova that has shape shifted into Sephiroth comes down and, uh, and kills Aerith. And uh, the rebirth is going to end around that point. Now, something that I have thought from the beginning is like as soon as I pieced together like what remake actually was, which is not a remake, uh, you know, when the idea of fighting fate and fighting destiny and being free of its shackles, like as soon as I kind of figured out what they were going for there, my instant thought was Aerith is not going to die, or she's not going to die at that point. Uh, I so my my prediction is she's going to live. She's going to survive the Temple of the Ancients, and then later on, she's going to realize that, well, I, I can't properly summon Holy uh, without uh, dying. And so I think she's going to sacrifice herself at some point. So Ronan, predictions. Let's talk about Rebirth. Yeah, yeah. So I have, uh, I've only actually watched one review so far. I think I even sent, you, I sent it to you. I think it was the IGN review. Where it's, I, I was like, oh, well, that I was kind of worried. Where it was like, you know, within the first like you know minute of their video, they mentioned like, yeah, you know, the plot gets really convoluted and stupid. It's like, oh god, no, <laughs> that that it just that just makes all the all the fears kind of like uh, they just boil over even more. So it's like, oh god, no. But uh, what I would like, it, at my understanding is, yeah, it, it ends at the same point of disc one ends at. Uh, it, it's it's not so much open world as it is like open sections. So it's like okay, well I get to travel around this section of like the great, what was it, the great plain? What 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 was the world called outside of Midgar, like the Great Plains or whatever? Oh, I have no I idea. Think, I have long yeah, since well, lost that knowledge. <laughs> so so you, like, but different areas of the original are kind of in these larger, self-contained, semi-open world, but you know small ish sections so like you know cosmo canyons apparently like in one section of it uh like there's i've 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 seen some uh like uh, some news thing about how there's apparently some beach that there's some beach section and uh uh, tifa and uh eris and bikinis is apparently a thing that is trending all over the place because they have there's some like you know uh, costa del sol because they in the original game, like right after Junon or Junon, you you go to the beach. Uh, well, yeah, I guess so. I could, I know that I remember. Like, obviously, there are beat sections because uh, you get to roam around like the whole open world section. But I don't remember the name because uh, I haven't I haven't gone through the original game at this point in probably like twenty some odd years. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't remember the name of Costa del del Sol, but uh, like a. Uh, a gold saucer is going to be an area in it. Uh, I've, uh, I'm happy. Like so, something we didn't mention, we were talking about remake. Is remake uh, corrects a long-standing sin of like Final Fantasy games past. Like I think, I think nine or so. Uh, Chocobos go wark. 
So this is very important for Chocobos to say Wark. And for the longest time in Final Fantasy, they have gone Aye! instead of Wark. And Final Fantasy VII Remake corrects this because the Chocobos go Wark. So that's important. And the Choco I believe Chocobo breeding is back in this game. So it's like, can, can you get the legendary golden Chocobo to get Knights of the Round? That that would be nice. It'd be nice really jumping summons. the gun to have uh, <laughs> not to the round at this point in the game. Yeah, that's way too early for it. But like, like I've seen some videos of people using chocobos to get through, uh, to to get through several sections. So I I don't know if that's like okay in this section you can use the chocobos and in this section you can't. Who <laughs> like that's hard to say. Uh, I would like for I would like for the summon material to actually be useful. <laughs> Because I I I don't I think I I think I summoned a summons once in my whole in all of my playthroughs of uh, Final Fantasy Remake because uh, like you summon these creatures and you can't control them they just kind of wander around and occasionally attack and I don't like that I would much rather them just be like summon forth and do hella damage and then they go away so hopefully the summons actually become useful in this game otherwise. Uh, it's going to be kind of a waste. <laughs> yeah, the summons, like, all, like, every Final Fantasy since, like, 12 has had that problem. The, the summons, summons do not work in an action game environment. They work in a turn-based environment. Uh, so, yeah, let, let's do something with those. I agree with that. Yeah, and, you know, this is a separate tangent, but, you know, like, bring back Doom Train. <laughs> why, why, can we get Doom Train in Final Fantasy 7? Oh, I know sure, from but Final you, Fantasy 8. Yeah, but, yeah Final like, Fantasy 8, the great game. I mean, no, not really. Doom Train is the best thing about that game. Like, uh, I, I will, I will, I'll, I'll bring back Doom Train. That, that's, that's what I, that's, that's my bold <laughs> prediction for Rebirth, is Doom Train will be brought back. I'm curious... If all, because I know all of the characters are at the very least in this one. Like I know, like Vincent and Sid are in it. I don't know if they're playable. They could be like Red Thirteen and just kind of like you know, fighting NPCs. I'm not sure. Uh, Yuffie's uh, like Yuffie and I know Red are actual like controllable combat characters. I don't know if Kate Sith is, uh, but fuck Kate Sith. <laughs> uh, so, What's wrong with him? It's a great character. He's a kitty. <laughs> He's a stuffed cat who throws dice. This is, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I cannot support the... the, the no, anatomy. he's completely fine. <laughs> so what do you think you they're going to do with the truth. story? I, I, It's going to be different. Like, where, where do you think it's going to be different? Because we've seen... Uh, uh, during the trailer, like we saw a spot where it looks like Cloud's actually about to attack Tifa, and like I, I haven't. If that is in the original game, I have not gotten there yet. Like I remember Cloud, like you know, almost killing Eris during a pivotal scene. I yeah. don't really remember him like being a, a, a aggressive towards any of the other uh, any of the other characters in the game. Like. So in the original Final Fantasy, uh, Cloud, because of the experiments done on him by Hojo, uh, like uh, Seth Roth can have some degree of control over him. And there are points in the original game where Seth Roth, because actually like most of the first chunk of the game, it turns out Seth Roth via astro projection, whatever bullshit, because he's anytime you see him, you're not seeing him. His actual body is in the live stream. But he's he's been manipulating and controlling Cloud. Like you get this, you get these moments in the original game where he has like voices in his head, for lack of a better word. And the remake, you don't actually there there aren't any sections where he's being controlled or manipulated. But he does see Sethroth. But so I don't know. It it'd be kind of it, it's going to come out of nowhere if Sethroth can suddenly have some form of control over cloud but like that would be my assumption for what is uh for, for what that scene is so like cloud you, it, that rather it's out of context and there's like it looks like he's about to attack her but he's not there's something else happening it's hard to say but uh, if if it is seth roth controlling him then that is uh they they did they, they that's a failure of remake to not set up the fact that that is a thing that could happen 
Yeah. I don't know. The, the, the only big prediction I have is, is Aerith is, is going to make it somehow. I, I, I wonder if they're going to... Um, are they are they going to kill someone else? Or is there going to be a fake out? What if, what if Tifa dies instead of Eris? Like that's the shit I, I'm really curious about. Like how do you think Zach is going to play into this? Because as I've said, like Zach he's alive is and a, well. Because I didn't even really realize that. Like oh no, Zach's still around and kicking. I well, I completely missed that. Is he though? Like what I don't want them to do is to say that like Zach is alive in the main timeline and has always been there cuz uh, uh you're going you're going to get there when you finish the game uh why am i going all in i have not been paying any attention to the poker uh <laughs> so like uh, at the end you at the end of remake you you beat the plot ghost and there's a big explosion and uh then it cuts to Zach's final stand and there's also plot ghosts there, and they explode, and so that presumably is changing things so Zach could live. Like, what I don't want them to do is is somehow to say that the the explosion, the explosion from fighting the time ghost in the present day, somehow also exploded in the past before the fight that caused the explosion happened. Like that's the shit that I hope they invo- that, that they avoid. And so I think the only way they can avoid that is to do like another timeline with Zach. So like please, Square Enix, don't just try to say that Zach was actually there the whole time. Because that may of all the things that could not make sense, that makes the least amount of sense. Yeah, yeah, it really they they made they made it too fucking complicated. It it has become Kingdom Hearts, <laughs> where it's too complicated yes. to make sense. Don't tell me it, that an explosion that happened in the future traveled back in time to save Zach. Please, no, I am begging don't, you. Don't don't tell me Kingdom Hearts is light. Don't tell me that. Don't please don't. But uh, yeah, I, I I really don't know what they would what they would do with uh, with that with this like. It's too like like an Aerith dying is like too iconic, so it kind of has to happen. I feel, but it's also it's also so iconic that you're never going to be able to duplicate what happened, because it's it's not a brand new IP where nobody where people going into it aren't expecting it. Yeah, it's it's like again, it's 25 years. There's a fucking reference to it in goddamn Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> so, uh, like it's like you. It, it's too much. It's too much of a pop culture thing. You can't not do it, but you can't do it and expect to get the same result either. <laughs> so, which I don't, I don't even know what I'm trying to say there. It's like, like you have to address it somehow. Do you like? Do you kill somebody else? I, I like like you mentioned. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's like the games. I guess it's, like, it's not a remake. They can do whatever they want with it, but they, yeah, like. They gotta pay that off somehow. Like something big has to happen at that point. But what could it possibly be? Like, well, see, this conversation, this 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 going on two hour conversation, does prove like somehow that they were that they are on the right track with what they're doing. Because had this been a straight up actual remake, you know, okay, maybe we'll change a character bit here and there, you know, get, give Barrett or you know, we'll, we'll keep the parts that, that improve character story, like like Barrett and like Avalanche. We'll, we'll keep that stuff in there because it makes the game better overall. But on a whole, it's largely like 98% a remake. Had they done that, this conversation wouldn't be had. Oh yeah, this is going to be cool. I can't wait to see such and such. Oh yeah, that's cool. And there would be no speculation <laughs> because now we are in. Oh gee, I don't know what they're going to do. It's like this is going to be so. Like, are they going to? Are they going to kill somebody else off? Who would they kill off? Would it be Tifa? Would it be Barrett? Who knows? Like maybe maybe the, maybe the, maybe Zach is the one who dies, rushes in to save Aerith, and then bites the sword. I feel like who there's got to be. I, like, what, what I'm hoping for, I've busted out like three times. I'm playing so bad. Uh, what I'm hoping <laughs> for is that like every once in a while in the game, we just switch over and, and play as Zach, doing like Zach slowly coming to the realization that. Uh, his world is fucked, and he is supposed to be dead. 
I think that would be interesting. Uh, like I said, anything other than just tell me that Zach was somehow alive the whole time, even though he couldn't have been. Uh, but I want I want to see Zach's alive. Like they got to do something with that. So like show, give me Zach gameplay. Let me play as Zach. Uh, let me see what Zach would have done or would have tried to do if he survived his last stand. Uh, that's what I want out of this. Uh, I I don't really know what they do with the middle because I'm at the point in the original game where I've escaped Midgar. Uh, I, I'm on my way to uh, to Gold Saucer for for the first time. Like the story doesn't pick up a ton until like the end of Disc One. Like so much of Disc One between uh, escaping Midgar and the Temple of the Ancient in Temple of the Ancients is just chasing Sephiroth, and that's that's all you really do. Like there's not a lot of meat there, so. How are they going to compensate? Like we we saw the the unnecessary padding in remake. Are they going to pad more? Like the padding's going to have to come from somewhere. Is the padding going to be they're going to create like brand new stories that didn't exist before, like the train graveyard storyline, or is it just going to be the the open world sections, the exploration? I'm hoping for for that. Uh, give me. Give me, give me the open world sections. Uh, I don't need another like made up story that that doesn't have any sort of a uh, relevance to the original game. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like as we've mentioned several times before, you know, like at this point, like they have broken the chains of like the bonds of destiny or whatever anime bullshit they're going with here. Like, so it like it is now a completely free ride. Like we'd like a. Like the whole new, a whole new ball game. We have no clue where the story is going to be. Uh, it's not the original. Like who's the, like? It's probably going to hit a few beats, but it's not the same. It, it's no longer the same story. So like, it's like really, it could be. It could be anything that's going to happen. Like at this point onwards, which I think prediction wise, kind of you know, it, it that does make that kind of difficult to do. Like say because again, every it everything's everything is new now, which is. It is refreshing to have everything be new. What are, I wonder what they're going to do for part three because so mu- there's so much backtracking in the original game. Like after Eris dies, uh, so like remake three. Are they, are they going to reuse a bunch of assets, or are they going to somehow like? quarantine parts of the world from this game and so there will be exclusive areas for part three you know like golden saucer is in part is in you know every part of final fantasy 7 like yeah i don't know like how are they going to take what remains after eris's death and turn that into like a whole new third part of the series yeah, I don't like. It's hard to. I can't even really begin. Like, it's hard to speculate on part two, which is a few days away, and you like you're talking about like what are they going to do in part three? It's like motherfucker, we don't even know. What are they going to do in part four? Because then they got to remake Advent Children in game form, and then Dirge of Cerberus. <laughs> Maybe we get yeah, actually get a good Dirge of Cerberus game. <laughs> Somewhere out there on YouTube, there is some fucking weeb. There's some anime nerd who's like, there's a Cerberus is an underrated gym. Sure, the combat is a little wonky, but once you mastered it playing it for 75 hours wearing your Vincent Valentine costume, you become Death Incarnate. So, so, somewhere out there, someone who's made that video essay defending Dirge of Cerberus. And, and, wrong. and bless them for defending their <laughs> fandom like that. <laughs> I mean, we, we have encountered such things before. Now yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, what, what what else do we got? Like we we've been going for like almost two hours now. We we talked about remake. We talked about the original game. Uh, we very limited predictions for 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 remake two rebirth. Uh, please don't fuck up the Zack storyline and don't make this even more complicated. Uh, any anything else that we got before we uh, we we wrap this up? Yeah, uh, just please don't please don't Kingdom Hearts this. Please don't fuck it up. Oh, just, they're, yeah. going to, they're going to. They're going to. Just to 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 quote a famous YouTube video, Cloud.
Don't fuck up. <laughs>